Okay, we're gonna turn on the, yes, the stopwatch. I won't take too much of your time. So at that, yesterday was Thursday. This is for Friday, okay? So this is something to get you started for weekend. I, I, I don't have much good news for you for the weekend. I'm gonna try to end on a positive note. But we're finally at the stage where, remember, the northern kingdom's already been taken by Syria, okay? So they're done. And the uh, Judah is still lasting. So all these kings that we've been talking about here in Second Kings, the last few have been kings of Judah because the northern Israel, the ten tribes there to the north, they're already taken, so there are no kings for them. And so here we are at uh, Jehoiakim, was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. But before we get to Jehoiakim, we got to return back to the station and talk to our anchor who has a few random facts for us. Uh, take it off there, Ralph. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a, you need to know that in order to scare off birds, this is real important in case you ever are at an airport and you scare off birds. The Glouch, the Gloucestershire Airport in England used to blast <laughs> Tina Turner music. It was proved to work even better than blasting bird distress calls. Ah, and I like Tina Turner, but whatever it is, that, that really works. So if you got some Tina Turner on your iPhone, you can blast it. The fastest aircraft made by man is the SR-71, which flew over 4,000, which flew over 4,000 missiles while it was in service. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of missiles. The Bunken Bruise, B-R-U-S-E, flew from Oslo, Oslo, Norway, en route to the city of Hamelavik, in the same country on October 2nd, 1948, Bertrand Russell, a 76-year-old philosopher, atheist, upon boarding the aircraft, asked to be seated in the smoking section, saying that if I cannot smoke, I should die. As the plane landed, the pilot lost control and it crashed, killing 19 people who were all seat sitting in the non-smoking section. <laughs> oh, leave it up to an atheist. All right. Remember... 95.7% of people don't die. So I'm, that, that probably skewed the, the averages there. Um, so talk, we're talking about Jehoi, Jehoiakim and he's king of Judah. Remember that this is where things are getting iffy for them. Uh, at the time, verse 10, this is 2 Kings 24. At the time, the officers of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem, laid siege to it. And Nebuchadnezzar himself came to the city while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiakim, king of Judah, his mother, his attendants, his nobles, his officials, all surrendered to him. Okay? Then Zedekiah was king of Judah. Zedekiah was 21 years old. This is verse 18. 21 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Ham. Hamutal, daughter of Jeremiah, she was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as Jehoiakim, there's Jehoiachin, or Chin, and Jehoiakim, and this is Jehoiakim had done. It was because of the Lord's anger that all this happened to Jerusalem and Judah, and in the end, he thrust them from his presence. That's the negative, right? But why? It was this continued stubbornness of sin, of I'm going to disobey God. I do not understand other than this is the bane uh, of people's uh, existence that they can't see their way clear to say yes to God and no to sin. That, that it's so strong of a default that here these men know the truth. They have access to the Bible. Just like Josiah had the Bible read. It's there. They could have read it. They could have seen. But no, 
In the matter of fact, in the Old Testament, it says stubbornness is as witchcraft. So to be, there's faithfulness. That's totally different than stubbornness. Stubbornness is when here's the truth set before you and you refuse to go along with it, no matter what. As, as they say, come Hades or high water, you're staying with the program you wish to stick with, not the one that God's given you. And it says, all this happened to Jerusalem, Judea, because of the Lord's anger. What was the Lord angry about? He's angry that people would not obey him. And he had told them way ahead of time the consequences. If you're a parent and you tell your child, if you do not do your homework and turn it in on time and it's checked off, you don't get to go out Friday night. Okay, then your child does not turn in the homework, does not get a check. And there's been no accident. There's been no sickness. There's been no vomiting. There's been no migraines. Just didn't do it. And you still hand the keys to your child and say, go out. You're doing your child a disservice. You're teaching them. There's no consequences. And God is not that kind of parent. And he would discipline his people. Uh, discipline is different than punishment. Okay, look it up. It's, discipline is there to teach a person a lesson. And it says, now Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. He just, he's he's not having, he's not letting anybody uh, say anything to him. So in the ninth year, this is Second Kings 25. So in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign on the 10th day of the 10th month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. He encamped outside the city and built siege walls around it. The city was kept under siege until the 11th year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, month, the famine in the city became so severe that there was no food for, food for the people to eat. Then the city wall was broken through and the whole army fled at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden through Babylon, Babylonians were surrounding the city. They fled toward Arabah. But the Babylonian army pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All of his soldiers were separated from him and scattered, and he was captured. He was taken to the king of Babylon, Riblah, where sentence was pronounced on him. They killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. Then they put out his eyes, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. This, it all because, this thing about it, he rebels against the king of Babylon. He rebelled against King King uh, Jehovah, Yahweh. And, and so his whole life was just him trying to have his own way. It's sad, really sad. Um, and and so when you study first and second uh King, first and second chronicles, all that, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for these that follow the Lord with a whole heart. You're looking for those that didn't. And you, you can see the outcome for both. The, the ones that follow the Lord uh, had much better outcomes than the ones who didn't follow the Lord. You, you can't get away with sin. That's, that's the bottom line. And you see this in the kings and how it influenced the people around them. As they say, everyone's influential. You're either a good influence or a bad influence. So I saw um, Janelle was correcting this child at a birthday party. <laughs> this is just in the last week. And she's and she was telling this child that, um, hey, right now you're being a bad influence. You're, you're going into places that we told you not to go. And he literally turned, started walk away, turned back. I saw that, turned back and looked at Janelle and says, I'm not being a bad influence. I, I'm just a venturous influence. Adventure. Whole new spin line, right? I'm not being bad. I know I'm going places where you told me not to go. But see, I'm adventurous. That, that, ladies and gentlemen, is scary. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this day, for Friday. Pray you help us all have a good weekend in your name and to follow you and not be like, these kings that just do not want to obey you. Make us like Josiah, who really followed hard after you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.